Now, ladies and gentlemen, what do we sell and how do we sell it and when do we sell it? This might be one of the things that we need to discuss in a very thorough and a, and a very content-rich way. The first thing is, you've got to identify the client. Somebody said something very interesting during our sessions with one of your clients, and I'm not sure who it was. I will have, I'll just recall my memory. Saying that, don't do a next move on a client who hasn't got the money to implement the projects. Very intelligent thing to say, but don't take it too far. Because the projects being, being profiled and scoped by next move might change the very existence of the business. We might have a situation where next move can bring something to the surface that can differentiate collapse or survival in a business. We have a case study. We did a company um, on their request. The Exco, we had a little, of, a little bit of a battle through the process with this Exco. But we could sense that this business is in mode of collapse. The way they answered the questions, and they then started to sort of fix the questions. And we said, guys, whoa, the, the value of the report sits to a large extent in your honesty. Now, it's not so easy to, to work around it because the, the system catches you out. So what happened is at the end, the report said this business is in collapse. Unless you do this and this and this, this business is in collapse. The business collapsed 10 days following that intervention and that entire exco was fired by the holding company. So what we must be very aware of, if a customer, we must, we, must, we must use the tool to help the customer identify their critical opportunities and their critical risk factors. Current strong relationships with client obviously is your first entry point to sell it. Those clients that you have a strong relationship with, are the easy ones to trust, to trust the system, to trust your business, to trust you as a person, and to trust that this will be a valuable session for the Exco. Current auditing clients, ladies and gentlemen, um, I don't want to ask how many people are here from auditing, but how many people are here from audit? <laughs> you know what your predicament is? You sit with the numbers of a business. And you work through the numbers of the business. And you check this is correct, and this is right, and this has been referenced there, and that has been there. But when you table your audit report, and I'm the CEO, I'm going to ask you, so why is this? What is wrong in my business that creates this? What should I do strategically to do this, to fix this? You must the auditor. And you know what we have found? I've, I've been in those sessions where the audit reports were tabled and the CEO asked these questions. And the auditor said, you know what? I work with the numbers. I do not work with the strategic design of the operation of the business. So the, it's, a, it's a very good thing for the auditor to do this with the business for him to get an understanding of how this business is being put together and why does this result and why are these things reflected in the numbers like this so as part of your audit report it's a very big value add to the service that you provide to the client and and and, and ladies and gentlemen if a client has got an audit account with PwC of a million or 1.5 or 1.7 or 2 million rand you add this as a value add to the business the percentage of that or that audit audit cost for them is nothing so Maybe that's a possibility. Current advisory clients, we as consultants don't do anything unless we do a next move. If you ask us as consultants to come and wash your cars, we say, we do a next move first. That's it. If you want me to build a call center, next move first. Why? Because I want to know what's going on in your business, whether I can expect the IT guys to incorporate voice recognition, to incorporate the, 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 the voice data system and the account system with a CLI into your data. If they don't have it, 
then I'm wasting my time to build a proper call center for them. If guy wants to do a re-engineering of a company in terms of their business processes and business process re-engineering as a, as, as a full end-to-end -end, um, um, assignment, and he doesn't understand the business, you get halfway through the process, then you reverse. Then you get further, then you reverse. Because things are not well known to you. We have a rule. If you want us to do anything in your business, step one is we do a next move so that you are on the page where you are. And it doesn't take us three months to understand your business. So that's, that's our approach, and it, it works. And then on the fourth level is initial advisory assessment for all advisory work, and this is what we do. We, we force it, we say, and, and, and if they don't want it, we say then build your own call center or re-engineer your own processes or do your, build your own websites or whatever. Mm -hmm. So the, what is the value that we would like to sell? First of all, ladies and gentlemen, for a business turnaround, I cannot, you know what? When we get a turnaround assignment for a business, it's too late. It's normally too late because they wait till it's too late before they tell. It's like a divorce. You know, you find, you, find, you find out that they should have divorced once they've killed one another. And they sat in church on Sunday morning, all smiles, with the kids, and Monday morning you, you, somebody said, I heard some gunshots at the neighbors and I was wondering what it was. So it's like a, a, a company in trouble is like a divorce. So what we find is if you get an assignment to do a turnaround, you are so trapped in time frames and the reality of immediacy. How do you get to understand the business unless you have a tool like this? I don't know how we've done it before. You know, we just start sell. You know, up your sales and up your marketing. That's step one. Identify projects. Identify critical challenges in the business, in the design of the business, projects to address these crisis areas, and we can immediately start with the most criti critical, imminent ones that we need to do. So it's, a, it's, a, it's an easy way getting immediacy into the, into the assignment. Listing requirements, if a company needs to be listed, we anticipate that in time to come, the next move report might just become standard listing documentation. Give us an overview and an assessment of your business design. That's been an objective, critical um, assessment of the business. Those documents can be presented with the listing requirements application. We can implement key next move projects prior to listing. If, you, if, a, if a company must be listed and they've got no operational framework in place for governance, can't list it can't list it. You've got to bring that governance profile of the business in line. You've got to get it at least in the positive. If they've got no capability on IT or on business process or on customer service, a company can't list. It's not a properly well-designed business. You put the, the, the investor at risk. And then use next move report, reports for listing prospectus information. That can be done, well, only if the, if the report is very positive. Due diligence. When companies merge, when, they, when there's a takeover and they want to know what is the comparison between the two businesses, we do a next move on both of them and it immediately identifies the critical strengths and weaknesses in both areas of the business. So you can compare companies to determine the shared strengths, identify which factors to keep in the post-takeover phase from which company and then also provide all interested parties with a business design assessment to determine, determine and calculate possible business value. Then on a business assessment, just from the point of understanding the design of your business, I'm, I've, I've, I wrote an article for our website and possible publication in a magazine on what should an exco know about their business. Ladies and gentlemen, it's from time to time we get a shock that an exco, they don't know their business. They don't know what's going on. They don't know what is the operational reality. What are the operational realities of their business on a ground, on a, on a functional, on a ground, uh, grassroots level? So sometimes we get an assignment where the exco says we want to see if all the design factors of a properly designed business are in place. We do it easy. We do a next move, and we've got everything out. Provide the business leaders with an in-depth assessment of the design of their business. Provide the leadership team 
with a full future business development program and empower business leaders to prioritize the future development of their business, which is standard practice for a leadership team, we believe should be from time to time.